everyone, Griff Hamlin here. Welcome, thanks for joining me today. In today's video, we are going to break down the introductory solo to the iconic B.B. King song, The Thrill Is Gone. And so I obviously, I played it, I'll say at full speed on the way in, so you kind of got an idea of obviously what it's gonna sound like. So what I'm gonna first do is kind of break it down note by note and what we're gonna do, and then I'll play it through for you a couple of times. You can join me and try to play through it nice and slow. And then of course you can play it with me full speed. So let's uh, let's jump right in, shall we? Now the song is, is a minor blues and it's in the key of B minor. And this is going off the, you know, sort of, I'll say original, I believe it's 1969 recording of the tune, the studio recording of the tune. If you go on YouTube, for example, and search BB King Thrill is Gone, there's like thousands of versions of this song. And, and I even have several recorded versions from different live concerts and all over the place. Every single time, as far as I can tell, he played that intro or that song, he played the solos differently. So it's important to note <laughs> that, that this version is that, I'll say, original 1969 studio recording. So, like I said, it is a blues in B minor. It is a minor blues, so it's gonna consist of, you know, B minor, E minor, a G major seven, and an F sharp seven. And, and we'll do the, We'll do the rhythm part and the chords and all that in a in a separate video because to be quite honest, this is this one's one you you more have to arrange because the rhythm guitar isn't really there. There's a few little stabs and a few little things going on, but by and large, it's not there. Most of the uh, the rhythm I'll say is done by the keys and there's a string section and all kinds of stuff going on. So that'll be a subject for another video. But the um, the very first note, we're since we're in the key of B minor, mm -hmm. we expect a lot of B minor pentatonic, which is exactly what we're gonna get. So we're gonna start right off on that 12th fret B. And you gotta give it some sugar. <laughs> you definitely gotta give it some sugar. You'll notice my first finger kind of drags along. That's to keep other things from, from ringing out. I can actually rake and get that note really nice and strong. And that's gonna be for three beats. One, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna kill it, okay? So one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna kinda walk down, 10th fret D on the first string, 12th, 10th, B and A on the second string. Then I'm gonna instantly, and if you think of that, that's sort of the top of box two of the minor pentatonic scale, or I often call this the four note solo pattern, because I can, you can do a lot of soloing here. And the cool thing is you can take this pattern and bring it down an octave. And that's exactly what's gonna happen here. So it's gonna be D, B, A, jump down. Now, same four note solo pattern, but based around the B here at the ninth fret of the fourth string. Uh, go up to the ninth fret on the third string, do a, do a bend and choke. Seventh fret, seventh fret, which is the D. 9th fret E, down to the B on the 9th fret of the 4th string, up to the D on the 7th fret of the 3rd string, B, B, B. Okay, so in time, let me give you that. 3, 4, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and... One more time. 2, 3, 4, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and... And from here, at beat four, go back to the D, bend that E a whole step. Seven, nine, bends up a whole step. Give it a little sugar till beat two, and you're gonna grab the seventh fret on the second string, and kind of roll your finger over to get the seventh fret on the top string. All right, so if we put the, the whole, what we have together, this is, you know, the first four bars, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, uh, four. And one, two, uh, three. One more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, uh. and 
so from there, that's that's the whole first four bars. So that's the one chord. So from there, we're going to go to the four chord, which is the E minor. Now, the, the first thing that's going to happen is if you kind of imagine what I call box one. Right, so that that tenth fret. This is the B minor pentatonic scale. That tenth fret, that D is going to go up a whole step. Now, we've just come from here, so it's pretty easy to grab that with your pinky or your third finger. One and two, release and three. One and two and three. Back to the seventh fret. One and two and three. Give it a little sugar. Now we're going to switch. Notice that seventh fret there and the twelfth fret on the second string. Those are the same note. So we're we're not really going anywhere, but but we are moving to a different position. So we have one and two and three and four and one. Now we're going to go through the sort of blues. This is kind of a funky thing he does right here. 12th fret B with my third finger, hit the 10th fret, but you're going to sort of give it what I call the blue squeeze. You're going to push it a little sharp. Then the 11th fret, which makes no sense, to be perfectly honest. There's, there's no reason that should work, but because it's a passing tone and we're going to be working our way through it, it works out okay. And we're going to go up to the 12th fret, bend that up a half step, which gives us a blue note back to the 12th fret, and then I'm going to take that 10th fret. This is the hardest thing because I now have to bend that a full step with one finger. I have no other fingers available. <laughs> now, if you can't do that, and a lot of people can't, there's other options. You can switch your fingering real quick to the third. Okay, because the next thing after that, after that whole step is to return to the 10th fret and then to go down to the 12th fret at the second string to the B. You could again refinger that and put that at the 7th fret here. So I could do and I could end up here. After that, okay, so, so again, um, just that little section. That's probably how B.B. King does it. I've, I've seen him do similar types of things, although never actually seen him play this lick. Or... And see, I switch my fingering, and I hit that B instead of that B. And from there, you can either go to the other B, or you can stay put, because the next thing that's gonna happen is, I'm gonna hit that B again, and do that 10th fret bend again. So I do that 10th fret bend again, return it, strike it, strike it again, and back to B. So I have two choices. I can, I can go from here, or from here. Same notes. You'll have to decide what works for you, okay? All right, so let's take it from the four chord. Let's let's play it just through from here. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four, one. And also, he plays very, very, very quietly in this segment. So you really want to pick very lightly. He's barely, barely touching the string. It's it's almost hard to hear in the recording. It's so soft. Okay, um, let's let's do it with the with I'll say the alternate fingering of kind of staying more in the box one area instead of the box two, two, three, four. Oops, sorry. <laughs> one. Two, three, four. One and two and four and one. It's 
So as you can see, it works either way. It's a little bit more of a challenge to get the sugar on the note, the vibrato. You kind of, that to me, that takes a little bit more effort than here. But I can get it pretty much the same. All right, the next chord is going to be that G major 7. So that's going to be, um, you kind of don't have a fingering choice here. Up on the top string, 10, 12, 12, 10, down to the B on the second string, 12, and strike that again. The next chord is F sharp 7. Um, this one you're going you're gonna to hit the E up high, the 12th fret on the first string, and then you're going to bend it up, but kill it, and then release it and pull off to the 10th fret. And then we do a little grace note, which is where I hit the 10th fret, but instantly hammer onto the 12th fret. So it's one, two, and three, four, with a grace note. One. Back to the um, B minor chord at that point. 10th fret. 10th fret again, uh, this D up here, down to the B. Again, you could probably go down to the seventh fret, but I don't think you would want to. Up to the D, back to the B again. And you hit that one fairly quickly, and then there's this sort of random stab at the end. <laughs> it's the seventh fret across the uh, second and first string, and it just kind of hits it. So that's the gist of all the notes and, and all the different options. So, you know, figure out how to, how to finger it, you know, play with a little bit, figure out what works best for you. Um, I'll play the whole thing through once kind of nice and slow. I won't have uh, my little looper backing or anything. I'll just play it through nice and slow. That way, if you want to, you know, rewind and play it again with me nice and slow, you can get, get through it a couple of times. All right. So here, let's do it. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four, one, four, one, And I used some alternate fingerings in there. <laughs> that may happen now that I can't remember exactly which way I did it to begin with. Uh, let's do it one more time. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Now, I think this solo is often regarded as a fairly easy solo to get started with. And I think in many ways it is. It's, it's fairly simple in the sense that it's really nothing but the minor pentatonic scale, which I commonly call level one soloing. Uh, it's definitely a topic for another video, but uh, suffice to say, over a blues, the minor pentatonic always works, whether it's a minor blues or, or I'll say a more traditional, it's not really a major blues, but we'll call it a major blues for the sake of argument. Um, the, the minor blues scale is the easiest, uh, you can never be wrong with a minor blues scale. 
So it's the easiest way to improvise. That doesn't, I don't mean to belittle it in any way, it's a fantastic sound, and I use it probably 90% of the time, as do people like B.B. King and Albert King and Stevie Ray Vaughan. I mean, it's the sound of the blues. So saying that it's the easiest way and that you can't make any mistakes is 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 in no way belittling that sound. It's it's awesome. It's an amazing sound, so it's great. Um, but it is the the common, I'll say, easiest way to approach this. And because there's nothing super fast in this song, it tends to get used as sort of an introductory type of solo. So if you're new to soloing, this is definitely a good way to go. It's not hard to count. It's not super fast. Some of those bends, however, could, could really trip you up. A first finger bend, I don't care who you are, is, is a challenge. And it's hard for me, um, it's hard for everybody. Unless you use super light strings, which BB King does, by the way. Um, if I'm not mistaken, eights or nines. So on a short scale guitar, so there's he's actually got very little tension on the strings. I have 10 gauge strings on a sort of middle scale guitar. Um, but if I play this on a Strat, I'm on a long scale guitar, I've got tens on it, that's tough to do with 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 a first finger. So, if if that's your situation, don't be afraid to refinger so that you can use a third finger or a fourth finger and have a little help. Uh, those bends can be a challenge. All right. So um, what I'll do now is I'll say farewell, but I'll leave you with me playing it again, sort of over. I just I just played the chords into a looper, and like I said, I'll do a separate video where we'll kind of talk about some some rhythm ideas for this in case you were just playing it with one other person or maybe in a band where you don't have a keyboard player. Uh, there's a lot of different situations you might play this tune. So I'll do another video uh, for the rhythm and how you would handle that. But this is the solo, and if you'd like to play it along with me, that'd be cool. Uh, of course, if you dig this, you know, um, if you're on YouTube, you know, do the like thing and the subscribe. I'll, I do more videos all the time. So all that stuff, check out uh, bluesguitarunleashed.com if, uh, if you have a moment you want to learn more about playing the blues. And here you go. Play it out, and I'll see you soon.